All right, guys, the moment has arrived. As soon as the live event was done at the Apple reveal of the M1 Pro and M1 Max, I went ahead and I ordered. I got the M1 Pro, I hope it's good enough. If not, I'm gonna get the M1 Max. I'll tell you later why I ordered the M1 Pro and not the M1 Max, but let's just go ahead open this up oh look at that i mean even the box look at that it just it just opens right up it's like there should be a light illuminating from this beautiful machine right here this is the macbook pro with the new m1 pro just arrived right now so we're busting it open look at that you know there is this this feeling when you open an apple product they just do an amazing job at the packaging it just looks beautiful let's go ahead and open this up and see what this new computer looks like and then i'm going to show you guys some video editing dun, dun, dun. let's go ahead see what this baby looks like i didn't order the m1 although i have many film peers who did and the reason was, was because as soon as the M1 was announced, I heard through the grapevine that they were going to come out with a souped up version in not too long. And here we have it. Oh, I got the 14 inch because it's going to fit in my computer bag that I fly all the time with. And so having something that was more compact is important. I can always hook it up to my large monitor whenever I need to. It is quite a bit different than the other MacBook Pros that I've handled. There's actually this little bit on the back here that's indented. Usually these are just completely smooth machines. Now, I've never looked at the bottom of the M1, so maybe the M1 is actually similar. Look at this, even the grippy feet are actually wider on this machine. Look at the side of it there. It is actually a little bit different than the other ones. Oh, <laughs> got to take that off. <gasps> and it boots up as soon as you open it up. How about that? Now, one thing that I really like is um, these hard buttons here at the top. I have had a MacBook Pro that has the, I don't know what they call it. It's, you know, the, the little whatever it is. And uh, I didn't love it, to be honest. Uh, I like having the hard buttons, of course. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing, guys. Oh, man. This, of course, heralding back to the day when they first announced the, uh, what was it? One of their original Macs that could actually write in different fonts, right? It was mind-blowing at the time. And it looks like they have done it again. This is beautiful. Big, nice trackpad. Trackpad looks the same size, actually, as my other MacBook Pro. That's about two, two and a half years old. I've got a lot of work to do here to get this guy set up for some video editing, and then I'm gonna show you how it compares to other Apple computers so that you can see just how fast this computer is gonna be when you're video editing and exporting, and how that might be an improvement over your current computer or setup. Okay, so here's a screen recording that I did to kind of show you know, some basic commands that you'd be doing within Final Cut Pro here. You know, we're gonna import some footage, we're gonna scrub through some footage, we're gonna drop some footage over uh, top of our A roll here, right? So we're gonna play some B roll. And everything is just so incredibly fast. The scrubbing through is super fast in your media browser. Um, playing things is super fast. Uh, let me give you some numbers here. All right, so here's an interesting number. So compared to my MacBook Air, which runs on an Intel chip, now obviously not um, you know the perfect comparison, right? Um, I actually do have an Intel MacBook Pro, uh, but I do not have Final Cut on it. So I can't, I don't really wanna compare, you know, Premiere, exporting in Premiere to uh, exporting in Final Cut. Um, Pro. Now, I will be doing some more comparisons here in the coming days, so watch for that. Um, but just to compare Final Cut Pro to Final Cut Pro, um, I am comparing this one to an Intel chip MacBook Air. Some of that video was shot in ProRes, 
from a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. Some of it was shot in 4K uh, from the Panasonic S5. So we've got a couple of different types of footage there. And then we've got some MOV and MP4 stock footage that we're dropping in on there. The render time for a five minute video with the MacBook Air, just allowing it to render. So canceling all other commands and just allowing it to render out was 21 minutes and 22 seconds on the MacBook Air. Now comparing that to the M1 Pro on, my, on this new MacBook Pro, the render time for the same exact five minute video when I deleted the render files and allowed it to render out again was one minute and 35 seconds. Now the next thing, I did an export. I simply did an export file. Now if you're familiar with Final Cut Pro, then you'll know when you do an export file, it's gonna render out significantly faster and the file size though is gonna be significantly larger because you're not adding a great deal of compression to it. So on the MacBook Air, <clears throat> doing an export file, it took 15 minutes and 49 seconds to export that five minute video. With the new M1 Pro MacBook Pro, it took one minute and 41 seconds to export that same video. Now here's the biggest test that I wanted to do because a number of my clients like to receive 1080 highly compressed for web versions of their video along with you know, these uh, lossless, uncompressed 4K files. So taking all of that 4K footage and then actually taking a compression format from compressor and then actually exporting it through Final Cut Pro using that compressor uh, compression format, I am exporting a compressed 1080 for YouTube file. And I think it's just called HD 1080p when you add this compressor format to Final Cut Pro. And it took 50 minutes and 53 seconds to export this highly compressed 1080 video of our 4K five minute video that we edited on the MacBook Air. So 50 minutes and 53 seconds. When we did the same video exported on the M1 Pro MacBook Pro, it took five minutes and 49 seconds. So huge difference. When you're looking at something like this and you're taking all of this 4K footage and all of these graphics you've added to your video and you're compressing them, it's a very power intensive process for your computer. And that's really where this computer shines. Because if I have to export a video like that in the middle of the day for a client and I'm using you know, one of these Intel chip MacBook Airs, for example, but it wouldn't be that far off from some of the other Intel based Mac computers, I would lose almost a whole hour, right? I'd lose 50 minutes and 53 seconds of my editing time just so that I can export a video. Now, contrast that with using now the M1 Pro MacBook Pro and it takes five minutes and 49 seconds. I can click export on that. I can go make lunch. I can come back. The video is gonna be done before I've even finished making my lunch. And then I can continue to edit while I'm eating my lunch. So we're looking at a huge difference there now between the Intel and now this M1 Pro. All right guys, so that concludes my test of what the M1 Pro MacBook Pro can do when you're rendering or exporting in lossless and also highly compressed video and what that might look like. Hopefully that's been helpful if you think that this computer might very well be an upgrade or help you in your company. And I do have some closing thoughts. At the end of the day, if you're running a small video production or media company, or you're even an individual, you always have to look at the cost and how many jobs, of course, you'd have to do to be able to earn the money back, plus make as much money as you want to make each and every month. Now, I don't buy things on credit, so any equipment that I buy for my company, I buy outright with cash because I don't like wondering if I maybe have a bad month or something, if I will be able to make those payments on that equipment. Now, obviously that's not gonna be the case for everybody, but my point is just weigh the cost of what this is and what those benefits might be to you. For example, if you're somebody who gets paid hourly to edit, then you might very well want an Intel chip Mac computer. It's going to be slower, and so obviously 
that's more hours on the computer, right? Now, if you're someone like me who gets paid per project, I wanna get things in and out the door as quickly as possible. And I have finally found a computer in the M1 Pro MacBook Pro that can actually keep up with me as I am editing. I've been editing for 14 years, I'm pretty quick at it, and I haven't had a computer that I feel truly keeps up with me for years. And this computer finally does that. In fact, it's so ready so much of the time that I'm gonna to need to step up my game in order to actually match the speed of this computer. For example, even when footage is not rendered out, I have found that this computer will eat through many, many different kinds of formats without dropping a single frame. And so I'm no longer having to wait for things to be rendered out for me to be able to watch it back exactly how it's going to look once it's exported, which is awesome. The other thing is, is that scrubbing is just so incredibly quick on this computer that I can find my clips faster and drop them in faster. Now, at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I did not get the M1 Max and that I had a reason for doing that. And this is the reason. I felt like this is so much faster than the M1 and the other computers that Apple offers, but the M1 Max was only marginally faster than this one. Now, of course, that's unless you go up to the $3,500 M1 Max option or higher, but I knew that I was gonna have to upgrade the hard drive and other facets of this computer, and so I would rather put the money into souping up an M1 Pro and not have the marginal increase in power that the M1 Max can give me, and that's because of the type of video that I actually shoot and edit on a daily basis. See, my company is not just a post-production company. My company does primary research, secondary research, we conceptualize, we script things, we come up with marketing strategies, and then we actually do all the pre-production, production, and then the post-production. So post-production is only part of what my company does, and I do have eight other Apple computers at this moment, and so this is just another computer to add to the arsenal. So that extra thousand plus dollars that I was gonna have to put into the M1 Max to get the upgraded hard drive, et cetera, was going to be a thousand dollars that I wouldn't be able to spend in another part of my company. For example, like getting a new light or getting more grip gear or something else for my trailer or my studio or a new lens or to put towards a new camera. So there's always some juggling there about where to put the money to continue to grow my company in the way that I want to. And I simply didn't feel like the extra thousand plus dollars for the M1 Max was going to be worth it for me. Now, if my company did a lot of 8K raw shooting, for example, or if my company did a lot of 3D animating and stuff like that, I would absolutely have gone with the M1 Max. There is no doubt about it. It gives you that much more of an edge, that much more power, and it's gonna help you when you're talking about very CPU and GPU intensive projects like working on 3D animating and dealing with very high resolution raw footage. And that's simply something that I don't do on a daily basis, so I'm not as concerned about that. Now, I still have some USB 2.0 drives that I use on occasion, and so of course a dongle is going to come in handy. I'm gonna leave some links down below to some accessories that you can get for your new M1 Pro or M1 Max computer. Hopefully that'll be helpful for you. Now, I will say this, getting one of these from Apple, this is a USB-C to USB 2.0 adapter, I think is going to be critical. It's only 20 bucks, just pick yourself up one because these dongles, I have found because I've gone through multiple dongles that occasionally they'll just die or they'll have issues connecting the drive to the computer and I don't have time in my day to deal with one of these dying and then having to wait you know, a couple days to get a new one from Amazon or going to the store and picking up a new one. So this is gonna be my backup. I've never once had a proprietary Apple product accessory fail on me and that's why this is my fail safe right here. So it's small, I can keep it in my bag and then I'll always have at least a single connector that I know will always work in my bag with me even if my dongle dies. Now, if you already have a computer that's getting the job done for you and you feel like you're keeping up with client projects and demands, then you may very well not want to upgrade to something like this because of the cost to be able to get there, especially with the minimum cost of $2,000 now to get one of these. And then of course, once you soup it up to the way that you want it, you're talking about hundreds to thousands of dollars more to get the computer to be exactly what it is that you want. So I'm not gonna pretend like this is a small investment, 
but for what it is and the power that it has and the ability that it's now going to give me to be able to get client projects done faster and move on to the next client's projects, that's gonna help me immensely because again, my company doesn't bill hourly, it bills per project. So getting projects done faster means more income and this computer will pay for itself very quickly for my needs. So this MacBook Air used to be my little travel computer because I do travel a fair bit for shooting commercials and other projects around the country and around the world. And now it will be the wife's because we now have this beautiful guy who is roughly the same size, a significantly larger screen. You can see that the border is significantly smaller on this computer and it really does make a difference. And this guy's gonna fit into both of my computer bags and my camera bag very nicely because of the compact size. I hope that you guys have found this helpful. If you did, please give me a like, that does help us. Go ahead and subscribe. We've got more great content coming at you and we'll see you in the next one.